If we are continuing on Shacharu Chorachayim Simara in Hey, and we are starting Sif Gimel and Daf Kuftet Amud Aleph of the regular Prince of Mishtabura, an amazing sugya. Again, we mentioned in Masachet Brachot, we learned together Daf Chaf Dalit that Shok Beishayerva, Kol Beishayerva, Tefach Beishayerva. We have discussed already Tefach Beishayerva, Shok Beishayerva, and today we're going to be discussing Kol Beishayerva, hearing, listening to a singing voice of woman while. Um, being busy with the Torah or Kriyat Shema is as soon as the Gemara. Now, what are the clarifications? What are the, the boundaries of this Isur? Says Marad of Shukharuch, Yesh Lizaher Mishimiyat Kol Zemer Isha Bishat Kriyat Shema. You have to be careful not to be hearing a voice of singing of a woman in the time of Kriyat Shema. And the Roma adds to that, Ve'afilu Be'ishto, even your own wife, Aval Kol Haragilbo, but a voice that you are very much um, used to, and no erva, that's not considered erva because it does not create any, hirhur, it does not create any trigger for thoughts and therefore it's muta. Now, before we go on to discuss this, I want to tell you that Chaham Obadiah, aside from being a gaon atzum and knowing Kala Torah Kula and, and much of other things that, that nobody else really knows, he also was a tremendous chazan. People don't, don't realize that Arabadiyah not only knew in chazanut, there are eight main makamim, and then there are um, hybrids of different, different makamim together, and you could have like subcategories, and you can mix and match and end up with a lot of makamim. So Arabadiyah knew over 100 makamim, a tremendous, it's chokhmat ashir, chokhmat chazanut. He was very much into it, actually. They, as, a, as a young person, sometimes he would sit and sing to himself and, and, and so on. So famously, they say that how about, yeah, I used to listen to an Arab singer called Omar Kurthum. Now, the only problem with that is that Omar Kurthum was a, a woman, a female singer, right? So how in the world can you listen to an Arab female singer if you're, uh, forget about how about, yeah, if you're from, right? What's that? You know, we're going to discuss that in just a moment, but that's really, that, that well, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that, that, that is, that is something that we're going to discuss. But again, I, I see already, I triggered everyone here. That, that, that was the point. So, so now you can listen to, to the details of this. And again, this is, this is very, very much a, um, common thing because um, you go to your to, to the graduation of girls and they have girls singing and parents are at the graduation can you listen to the singing voice of little girls is there an age limit to this right and aside from that as we're going to see in in, in this is only for an erva a woman that's married but the pnuya says the mishnabra pnuya should be mutar so what are the boundaries of this nowadays is something we're going to discuss right now. So let's jump into it. Says the Mishtabura in Ot Zayin. If you did, while listening to, to a voice of a woman singing, you said your Kriyat Shema, you go back and you say Shema again without brachot, says, says the Chafetz Chaim. I am Beuragrao Primigadim, that they... Uh, discuss this, the Chaum Badia writes that the Eved Yoriotze, because this is a Drabanan, and you don't have to go read the uh, Kriyat Shema again, and Kafa Chaiman or Letzion Paskin the same way. So, it, in other words, you have a, a Machloket Mishnah Bura over here with Chaum Badia and the, the other leading Sfardi Poskim of Kafa Chaim or Letzion, whether or not you have to go back when you are in, tra- you were in transgression of a Drabanan, and uh, something that's concerned me, Drabanan Erba, whether or not you are. Um, and it's because of Hirhur, and you don't, you know, it's not certainly that you had Hirhur, this is a, a Gezerah, maybe you're going to come to, to be triggered, and therefore, how about the with the Abed, you don't have to go back and read it again. Zemer Isha, so says the Chafetz Chaim, Afilu Pinuya, Aval Belosh Shat Kriyat Shema, Shari, says the Mishnah Bura, when you are saying, you're about to say Shema, you can't even have a, a, a voice of a pnuya, a woman that's not an erva and is not married. Even that you cannot listen to because, again, it's 
something that, that, that may, uh, may cause um, you to be defocused, but if it's not in the time of Kriyat Shema, this Chafetzayim would be mutar. To listen to a Priya singing would be mutar. Don't, no one should leave now because that's not the halacha, as the Mishnah says just within the next line. Says the Mishnah Bura, of course, you cannot have hana'a from it. Uh, we said this before. Says the Gemara, right? So you can't, just like you can't gaze at the finger even of a woman, you can't hear, listen intently in order to have hana'a. Because we don't want this to end up in Irur. And if the woman singing is a, a married woman or any other person that's concerned in Arva, it's always asur to hear. Here it is. Nida is one of the 15 Arayot. So therefore, a not married girl that is Nida. It will be in, included in Arayot and says the, the Chafetz Chaim to Lot Didan, young girls that we have, Kulam Echeskat Nido, we don't, we don't have Tumah Tara, hence we don't use the Mikveh for women who are not married. So therefore, once a, a girl gets their, their, their cycle, the beginning, until they go to Mikveh and they get married, they're all Nida. So therefore, Kulam Echeskat Nido, then Mishyagia. Once the time of the Vesit comes around, there will be Asur. Now the Ramosha says fourth grade, whatever. That's that's considered basically already part of Erva. So hence, when you have choirs of the schools, schools are usually careful not to put in the choir when, when the parents are there. Again, some, some of the uh, Cheder style schools don't even have um, the, the fathers in the graduation of the daughters. Um, so they get around this, this this problem, but again, in those schools who have it, they're careful based on the not to have uh, above a certain grade uh, part a part of the um, part of the, the the choir because of this is because of a pluyan nochrit. How about a pluyan nochrit, a non-Jewish woman? Do you have a isur or not? So if you were attempting to, to answer up Oma Kurthum with the fact that she was uh, not, not, not uh, Jewish, good try. It's not going to work. Because even an Akum, it will be Asur. Says the, says the Mishtab Ram, Ben Kohen Ben Yisrael, Mekol Makom, Imhu Bederech Ben Akum. It says if you're stuck, we live among the goyim. So imagine you're uh, on a bus trip, whatever it is, on a train, wow. and there is a, a, a you know a voice of a woman singing in the background, and you're anus. You can't get out. You can't jump out of out of the bus, right? and you can't stop them. Because we have not heard this to be erva de oraita. Mutar likrot ulvarech. You could see, say brachot. You could say shema. The imloker because if not, kevan shanu shruim ben akum nitpatel mitorav tvila. Because we live amongst the goyim, you will be you you will be nullified from Torah from tvila. Ve alzene maran on this it says et la sod Hashem eferu toratecha. When it comes for 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 sometimes you have to do for Hashem eferu toratecha. You have to bend. Certain things, but you have to intensify your kavana to be mechaben lekedusha shuosek to the Torah, the tefillah that you are doing. And don't care about the the singing that's going around. Now we're going to discuss a little bit of this in the the, the Sfari poskim when we talk about the issue. The Ben Ishchai, the Kafachaim, right that this halacha is even by a an ugly old um, woman that's 190 years old and uh, has entered the Genesis book of record of ugly people, still it will be um, asur to listen to it, says the Ben Ishchai, because even though that you don't have a chashash for hirhur, nobody is going to have any hirhur. They may throw up, but they're not going to have any hirhur. Still, still, it will be asur 
says, says the Ben Ishchai, because the, there is no chiluk. When Chazal made a, a takarad rabaran, as lo plug, and therefore the, it will be asur. And a woman that has a very bad voice, she, she may think uh, she, she is God's gift to humanity, but you know, everyone objectively thinks that she, she has a very, very bad and unpleasant voice. Um, the Sefer Yeriot Auhel writes that even that is included in this. So basically what we're saying is that the British Chai Kofachayim write that there's no difference when Chazal made the Gizrat Rabbanan, the Takarad Rabbanan, it's across the board applicable even if the reason for it of, of trigger of Hirhur does not really apply because this woman is ugly, is old, has a horrible voice and all of that still would not make a difference. But um, when you listen to a woman that you don't know, you don't know who she is. You don't know who is singing, right? And you're not seeing her at the time. So it's two things. You don't know who she is. So you don't have an image in the mind. And she's, of course, not in front of you. So you can't connect the voice with an image. Um, then it becomes a machloket in the poskim. Chacham um used to be more, more stringent about this. Um, and uh, later on, uh, he became a little bit more uh, more lenient. So both him and Arab Ben Sion Abashaul in Ornetzion, they both say that's mutar to say Kriyat Shema and say other Dvarim should be Kdusha because once you don't know her, you can't attach a an image to it. The, the mind of a person, of a trigger, works with imagery. And the Gemara says this. The Gemara says, Haomer, Rachav, Rachav, Miad Mikri. Gemara says, oh, he did it and it didn't happen. It's because he didn't know her. So there's no imagery attached to it that would be mutar. Rabbi um, Yashiv Alav Shalom used to be mahmir on this halakha. He used to say it's asur, but he also besof yabav he became more lenient in a later uh, in a later, later psak that he also agreed that when you cannot possibly attach any imagery to this because you have, you have no idea who is singing um, and you have never seen them and it's not in front of you, then it's just the recording or whatnot that would be still um, permissible, that would be mutar, because it does not really cause any, um, any trigger of any hirhur of any sort, and therefore it would be um, allowed. Now, now, Chaumbadiyah says, still, you should be focused on what you're, uh, you're saying. You have a beautiful voice of a woman, it's very difficult to, to focus, and still you're doing Kriyat Shema, you have to be, again, we have, we're coming off the simanim of all the things that you have to have in mind, for for Kavana in Kriyat Shema, for Kavana Mitzvah Doraita, for Kavana Dor Machu Shemaim, all mitzvot, like that, and, and Perush Amilot, that's important to, to bear in mind every word that you say, that you are understanding what you're saying and so on. So therefore, Chavan says, even though that's mutar, but it, it, it's harder to be focused when there's music going in the background, especially people who are more musically oriented, they, they find it very, very difficult to focus when there's background music going on. So that's something to be, to be mindful. Now, um, so Chavadia says, what is the gather of Makira and no Makira? That's basically um, what you're asking. So um, Chavadia says that, that because the, the Isur is only Midrabanan, therefore, you could be Mikel, and this is something that's very controversial. How this says, even if you have seen a picture of her before, right? But now she's not there. He says you could be reliant on the, those um, who hold that so long as um, you have never seen her in, in, in life, in life, you have never seen her life, you could be Mekel, even though that you have seen an image of her in a picture, still would be uh, allowed to be Mekel. Others disagree and say, no, as long as you could attach an imagery to this, it will be, um, it will be us. So that's, again, that becomes a machloket, chaumadia holds, because it's the Rabbanan, you could, um, you could follow the lenient, uh, the lenient approach. Um, and even though that really in, in Yabi Omer, in Chelek Aleph, in the original Shubat that he had, uh, he says that it's um, makirah if you've seen the image, 
this is what, what when I said originally that Haravadia used to be more Mahmir and became more Makkal, this is what I was referring to. In Halak Aleph of, of Yabi Omer, he was much more Mahmir and so he held that even if you've seen any image of this woman, it's considered Makira. And, um, and uh, you know, again, later on, he was Khazir. Even in Ali Khot Olam, when he wrote, um, he wrote Ali Khot Olam and Sefer Ben Ishchai, originally, which he wrote it 40 plus years before he published it. He wrote it, he started writing Ali Khot Olam as a Bakhur, as a young Bakhur, and, and then he revised it. Uh, so in Ali Khot Olam also, he was Mahmir. But then in a later Chuba, Arvadia was, was Mekel in Chalaktet. Uh, Siman Kufret, I think it is. Um, when he discusses this, um, he became much more Mekel, and, and therefore Mishnah Chorah, that's the, the last sack of Chorabadia was, that even if you have seen an image of her, but never saw the, the singer basically live, that would be still um, still permissible. Many disagree with this sack of Chorabadia. So therefore, it's Kedai to be Mahmir, if it's not, it's not like a aguna that you have to find the heter for it, right? So if you could be mahmir, it's the proper thing to be mahmir. It comes, generally speaking, these are in Yanek Dusha. I want to mention one, one parenthesis, one halakha. It's important to note this. Uh, while we go through all of this, and sometimes and these are tedious, these are difficult things. Hafez Chaim was once approached with a very difficult question. You know, in Europe, there were vast differences between different um, segments of Pali Israel in the Frum community. You had the Hasidim, you had the, the Lithuanians, the yeshiva world, and they didn't necessarily historically they did not get along very well. There were fights um, in the time of the Balatanya and the Nagaon, um, very bitter fights between Hasidim and what they called Mitnagdim, right? Uh, this nowadays, you know, it's irrelevant almost. It's not, it doesn't, it's non-existing. But um, th these were strong uh, disagreements based on halachic principles that uh, the Vilna Gaon held that they are um, compromising halachic principles, and therefore he stood fast, very, very strongly against them, and so on. But nevertheless, the first time that they came together in a beautiful. Um, display of unity was the first gathering of Agudat Yisrael, which the Hafez Chaim actually attended. The, the, the recent video, the only video of Hafez Chaim that recently emerged, the actual video of Hafez Chaim, is him entering this Asifa of Agudat Yisrael, the 10, 15 second video that is there. It's him actually entering this. Uh, this. So there was a Machtaka. The Israel, there was the Israel Tashim. There were many women that were involved with, with Inyane Klal, and therefore the Asifa had Israel Nashim on the balcony. And he had a Mechitza. But there was a Machloket between Hasidim and the, the regular litbacks, as we would call them. Hasidim wanted the, the Mechitza to go up to the ceiling. And the, the, the other ones said, wait a second, he's on the balcony, he has a Mechitza already, no one's going to see anything. Like, what? Well, like, let it be. It's not a shul, it's asifa. They said, yes, they said, no. They said, you know what? Hafez Chaim is the Zakan Ador, is the Zakan Ahura, is the, the Posek Ador. We'll go to Hafez Chaim, whatever Hafez Chaim says, we will do. Agree? Yes, agree? Yes. They went to Hafez Chaim. Now you realize that even though that the Moshe Feinstein holds the Mechitza in the shul, is the writer, is, he writes in the Chalak Aleph, uh, and he's very strong about this based on the, in the Gibara, Mishnah and Gibara in Masachat Sukkot Avnun Aleph and so on. First of all, that's not agreed upon by everyone. Secondly, this was not necessarily an issue of tefillah, even though they may, they may have daven there, but this was Asifa, right? So it's not so bad. At time, here's both of their, their arguments, and he says the following. This is one for the books. Says the Chafetz Chaim, it says in the Chumash, the Hashem says about the Jews that He is Shochen Itam Betochtu Motam. He says, I will never leave my children. I will never leave my people. I reside with them Betochtu Motam, even with all the Averot that they do. They do Abu Dazara, they do Shifichu Damim, right? We talk about, you know, first degree Averot. 
still I stay with them. But said the Chafetz Chaim, there is one Avera in the Torah that Hashem says, you do that, I'm out. I'm just going to leave. I'm going to check out. You do this one thing, I'm out. What is that one Avera? Says the Chafetz Chaim, the Pasuk says, Velo if Hashem sees Erva in your machane, in your camp, he leaves. He just checks out. You could be doing Avodah Zarah, he stays. You have you have Erva, Erva Tava, he checks. It's something of, of high level of sensitivity for our Kazbrochu's relationship with us. And therefore, he says, even though the halachically, not much to talk about when it comes to Inyane, to the, 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 the core element of Shekhinah staying with us, says the Chafas Chaim, all the way up, right? That's how he solved the, the, the conflict, the Machloket between the Hasidim and, 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 and the Mirtagrim, so to speak. So that's an important thing to realize that these are sugyot that are important. When you talk about Shok Vesha Erva, the whole issue of Erva, of what's considered it's new, what's not consistent. Israel Kedoshim, Baruch Hashem, we want to do the right thing, right? And if there's one area of Allah that we really want to do the right thing, and we don't want to take um, leniency, we don't want to take loopholes, we don't want to get shortcuts, this is the, the one area that Baruch Hashem, especially the Sfaradim, have been always, um, you know, really the, leading the way with Inyanet's Niut, and and therefore, if a person could be more uh, mindful of, of the details of this, yeah, of course, it's something that's beautiful and powerful, really powerful. You see this kuyot that you have, uh, that, that the Gibara mentions. It's not, not, you're not talking about segulas in the school books, right? The, the things that Gibara says about this kuyot that the person has, that we spoke about, what, what the Zohar Kadosh says in, in Parashat Nasod, Akut Hey, in Chalik Gimel Amibet, uh, or what the Gemara says in, in, in Masechet Yuma, that Memzayin, of how important and impactful it is, one little detail of being a little more careful privately at home about the Inyanet Sniut, and next thing you know, your children are going to be like this, and your husband is going to be like this, tremendous Hatzlaka, tremendous Parnasa, tremendous um, you know, relationship, positive thing in, in, in a person's life. That is because this area is the core element of our relationship with the Kuchibiru. So it says the um well we have um exhausted our time. We will continue we still I have a lot to say about this 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 last piece. Bazat Hashem will continue this um we pick it up where we left in the days to come.